There is a major bug in Unity Hub 3.1.0, and yesterday they released a fix for it in 3.1.1. So we need to go over what the issue is, because this is actually a serious issue, and that is really potentially pretty dangerous. And we need to go over what Unity did about it and uh, what they should be doing about it. So, And we'll also go into what is going on in the code behind the malicious issue. So... In uh, 3.1.0, I mean, it was actually a normal, relatively normal update. Uh, however, it turns out that Unity includes, uh, I don't really know how this works, how they've implemented it into their system, but they've managed to include this thing called Node IPC in there, which is a JavaScript uh, module. Um, for those who don't know, this might be completely unfamiliar territory for game developers uh, to get into this type of thing. But basically, uh, what this is, is... Uh, well, there are different types of modules you can download for JavaScript in order to, to write your program, basically. And this one is called Node IPC, and that's just inter-process communication, which who knows what they're doing with that with uh, Unity. But uh, Unity is making use of this component, basically. And someone a few days ago, I guess eight days ago at this point, which is crazy because you would think I would have heard about this by now, but it took eight days for me to hear about it. So... Um, Basically, what they did eight, d eight days ago, someone opened an issue here, bringing attention to this. So this might have actually been sooner than, or more than eight days ago. But uh, either way, the actual post got deleted. It looks like because you can't read it here. Um, but fortunately, someone saved it. So or, or something to that effect. I I don't know. Um, <laughs> j j just for clarification, you know, I'm trying to report this as accurately as I can. So. Uh, you know, feel free to correct me if I do get anything wrong, um, because this is a pretty serious issue. So now someone here says that they've uploaded, malware has been uploaded in terms of this Node IPC module. And we can boil it down to this. Um, he breaks down the code right here. And do not run this code if you're looking at this. Um, what this will do is it will go through every file on your computer essentially, and overwrite it with the heart emoji. Um, it takes place, uh, where is it? Right here. See, we're writing the file. We're writing to this file, the heart emoji right here, see? So what happens here is that we just go through all these different files and replace with the heart emoji only if, uh, it might not be in this particular section, but basically, only if your IP address is from uh, either Russia or Belarus. So obviously what the person behind this code did, you can look at this yourself, it's all on GitHub. Um, there's code in here somewhere that where they uh, figure out the IP address. I can't remember where it is. but So basically what they do is they look at your IP, and if your IP is within those two regions, they go through every file on your computer and switch it from whatever your file was to just a heart emoji. And... Obviously, their intent behind this is made pretty clear with their comments on this matter. Um, and you can see what people are thinking in general. Most people think this was a stupid idea um, because obviously this is against... I mean, it's going to destroy trust in open source code, which there might not even be that much to, be, to begin with, really. But because you can have basically anybody contributing toward open source code. That's what it is. For those who don't know, because again, most people who use Unity might not even know about what open source code even is, uh, because Unity itself is not open source. So oddly enough, um, Unity is taking this open source code, which just means that you can view the source of it um, and you can change it and make whatever changes you want to it, basically. So Unity can make whatever changes they want to this code before using it in their own application. Uh, but... Uh, we cannot make any changes. Game developers cannot make any changes to Unity's code. So Unity does not give us the same privilege that these uh, these programs do. Um, now, the downside is, like I said, you have these open source projects that anybody can just modify. And most of the time, when you're dealing with a project that contains lots of these, they're going to... I mean, you're just going to update it. You're not really going to look at what's being done in it, unfortunately, because... Uh, there's just so many uh, in the first place. Like, you cannot really, no human can really realistically uh, check all, all the different programs to make sure that they're doing things that they can do, uh, that they should be doing. Um, now, 
you would imagine that if some malicious code does get in there, people are quick to fix it, which in this case, they uh, they were. They did release a hotfix for it, so like they are reacting to it. But the problem is... Um, the problem is that these things happen in the first place, and that's what happens when you rely upon uh, when you rely upon these modules and these open source uh, packages. Is that anyone can sort of add something into the code and just destroy your application? And for whatever reason, um, Unity was unlucky enough to release this release of their hub program at the same time that this malicious thing happened, and so. Uh, you know that's unfortunate timing <laughs> so they had to release a hotfix the day or really the day of um in order to uh accommodate that so here they say uh this hotfix eliminates an issue where a third-party library that's uh node uh, ipc was able to create an empty text file on the desktop of people using this release version so what it does at the very end after it changes all of the files it adds a, a text file to the desktop that says with love from america um so it it's almost like you know, it, it really what it is is some some rogue American participating in the war, basically. In, in a way, they say it's a nonviolent way, but I mean, you got to think about your uh, the, what the consequences are of your actions. You know, like could this lead to someone becoming violent? Sure, it could. Um, so I don't really think it could be a nonviolent thing. I mean, <laughs> I, I hate the idea of saying that speech is violent, so I I, I don't want to equivocate that like. You know, anything that's not violent is actually violence. But, you know, I, even though it's nonviolent, you got to look at the harm that you're doing to people, especially because it's like mostly innocent people. Like probably he, you know, he might have been wanting to target like the Russian government or something. But you got to figure out that like y you've got tons of Russian people who either have nothing to do with the war or might even be opposed to the war. Uh, and they're going to be negatively affected by this to a considerable extent. And that, in my opinion, is not right to target innocent people who did nothing wrong. And apparently that seems to be what the majority of people think about this issue because, um, people keep downvoting this. So, and I'm, I'm happy that that seems to be the majority opinion, at least. But you have this one guy who's got all this power over this repository and it's just going to be, you know, uh, you know, just going to be effectively keeping this change i imagine i don't think he's going to walk back on his uh on his actions there but now every single project that uses this uh which i think includes discord and various other programs you can double check that um but a lot of programs probably use this um in fact i believe this repository gets a million downloads a week at least so you know this affects a tremendous amount of people and he knows it he, he knows it that's why he did it basically so um so at the end of at the end of all that when when they go through all the files on their computer it creates that empty text file that says uh from you know uh, with love from america so they they kind of unity neglected to mention that on their website here and then they go on to say unity says so remember unity is not actually responsible technically for this they didn't program it themselves but they nonetheless had it in their code so they say, while it was a nuisance, the issue did not include malicious functionality. Any user that had this file appear on their desktop after updating the Unity Hub can delete this file. So what they completely ne neglect to mention, and they sort of say that the issue did not include malicious functionality, like, of course it did. I mean, of course it included malicious functionality if, uh, if it wipes all of your files, you know? I mean, obviously they might be saying that it doesn't affect anyone who is not from Russia or Belarus. And it might be possible, I've not checked this out yet, it might be possible that Unity is not allowing Russian or Belarusian users to even use their Unity Hub. Um, I kind of doubt that, though, because whenever we go to uh, the support forum here, um, there are a few people speaking out uh, uh, out against this, you know, being frustrated by it and so on. Um but basically, you have, yeah, this guy, because of this incident, he had to delay his game. So, you know, it's like, it affected people. I mean, you can't say it wasn't malicious, you know? So, so you know what I mean? Like, it's just frustrating. So I, I wrote this myself to put it out there, and we'll see what happens. Um, we'll see what, the, what they do to respond to this. So... 
I don't think they will, to be honest. I don't think they'll respond to my post at all. Um, it's by the way, it's the only post I've made in my entire uh, eight years of being a registered user. Um, so I just I just feel like it's you shouldn't you shouldn't lie like this. I mean, really, like while it was a nuisance, the issue did not include malicious functionality. It's like that's a lie. That's not true. And I've had it to where people keep saying lies, you know, and it's like, I don't care what the issue is. I, I was going to make a video at some point on something, and this is going to be it because this actually can affect people's livelihood. I mean, if the guy, presumably, uh, who had to delay his thing by a week, I mean, if he didn't have a backup, he'd be screwed, right? Um, there's so many, there's so many things that could go wrong, especially like, what if you decide to get on a VPN and for whatever reason you decide to have a Russian IP address, you know, I don't know what, why you want to do that, but maybe someone does. And because of that, and they launched their Unity Hub and update it, boom, all their files are gone, even though they're not actually living in Russia or Belarus. So it's like, you know, I'm not blaming Unity for the issue. I'm, I'm trying to say that they should be a little bit more honest in their paragraph here. That's all I want out of them. Um, do I expect them to be more honest? No, not really. Um, they have no reason to, you know, <laughs> to do anything that I want them to do. So they probably won't. Um, and, you know, this is just one of the many issues that I have with Unity at this point. Um, I stopped using them in 2018-ish after I got tired of their engine. I released a game with it, and when I tried updating it, it broke. So I was tired of, uh, you know, playing their game, essentially. Where, And it, it's even worse than that, because I was, you know, I, I could just make some more digs at Unity here. But basically... I got out of their engine. I didn't like what they were doing from a game perspective and a financial perspective. I didn't like their business model. And I mean, it's been a good choice for me. I've never looked back from it. And now it's like, I just don't, you know, I don't have a lot of good things to say about Unity, unfortunately. Um, you know, people should be more independent in their game engines. Um, that's an opinion that I'm going to hold. So probably for a very long time. So, you know, I don't really care if you're using Unity to make your game or not. It doesn't affect me. You know, if you make a good game with it, that's fine. And obviously, again, they're not responsible for the malicious code here. They are responsible to a certain extent for putting that malicious code in their application and not checking it. Um, granted, hardly anyone ever does that, which, you know, I mean, could you hold... Like, if you're going to hold them to that standard, you have to hold everyone to that standard. And no one does that, which is really the bigger issue here is that node package manager is a it's a gold mine for these issues you know people include you know thousands if not tens of thousands of uh modules perhaps even more than that in a single project and they're full i mean they could be full of anything we don't even know um we just have to rely upon the the good intentions of other people to check it for us which you know in, t in days like today, it does get checked and people do see it, but it's like sometimes it could be too late. And as you know, other people point out, it's like, well, what could be the next, uh, you know, if, if we say that this is okay right now, you know, perhaps one day it's a, uh, yeah, perhaps one day it's like, one, one day it just affects everyone's computers and not just, uh, not just uh, Russian computers or a spe specific region. You know, what kind of warfare is that going to bring up? You know, it's, it's basically cyber warfare, you know. Um, you might say it's nonviolent, but it's cyber warfare in a certain way. You're specifically targeting certain people and destroying their property, you know. Um, it's really no different from other types of malware, um, only with the guise of trying to be on the right side of history, basically. And, you know, it's... It's, 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 if people accept it, it's going to be, it's going to lead to a thing where people start producing malware and people are going to be okay with malware targeting people they don't like. Um, so it's just, it's just going to lead to a bunch of bad things. And the, now I guess they're trying to adopt the idea of protest where, uh, to try and take what this, uh, protest where I guess is going to be what they call it to make it seem nicer than it really is. Um, but it's just malware disguised under a different name. You know, you're targeting certain people to make their lives a little bit worse so that your values can be spread in whatever way, shape, or form you want them to be spread. You know, you, 
you as the developer of this malware are trying to impose your beliefs onto other people who really have nothing to do with anything that you're upset about. And so you are actually the one hurting innocent people by doing this. And you probably know it and you're probably okay with it. So, you know, I don't know what the solution to this is other than to avoid using this thing for the time being. Um, and if you're using Unity at all, don't upgrade to 3.1.0, um, upgrade to 3.1.1, I guess. Better yet, just don't use Unity at all. And, uh, you know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's about it for today. So hopefully, uh, Hopefully you were not affected by this because th that would be really bad. Now I don't anticipate, I don't anticipate that people will be um, just not the people watching this video because it's unlikely that anybody, very few people will probably watch this video, and you know my warning will probably not reach too many ears who are actually affected. But be aware of this. Um, you know, don't switch to a Russian VPN. <laughs> don't give yourself a Russian IP address. Um, for right now <laughs> and who knows how many other programs this is in by the way it could be in unity hub it could be in discord it could be in who else knows um that's the big problem because this was a big package that is, is included in a lot of things so so yeah um let's see if they've responded to my question here it got deleted they deleted it. Wow. I got that live on video. You see that? They deleted my post. Do you think I should type another one? I think... I don't think that's going to do any good. That's interesting, right? It's very interesting. What do you think I should do about that? Hmm. I'm thinking either I'm going to repost that or I'm going to privately message someone. Um, I can message this guy. He seems to be the guy who posted this. Um, why did you... Well, okay, I don't know if he deleted my post. I want to privately message him. Can I do that? Isn't that nice? We got it on video. How often does that happen? Um, I, I just want to talk to him here. Start a conversation. There we go. How am I going to write this? Um, deleted post. I don't know. I want to talk about the deleted post, but... I also want to talk about the original thing that I wrote, which, uh, let's see. Well, I'll write this on my own. I don't think he'll get back to me by the time I'm still recording this anyway, but we'll see what happens. I want to, I want to reach out to somebody. It doesn't have to be this guy and I'm not, I'm not blaming him for deleting my post. It's just somebody like somebody has to be, you know, I have to be able to talk to somebody about this. Like what, what the heck? They deleted my post, which I knew would happen. I should have said I should have said that, but I, oh man, I didn't think they would do it that fast. Oh well, um, this video is going up for sure. Um, Unity, Unity deleted my post. Um, wow. All right, I'll post an update if I uh, get one. So we'll see what happens. <laughs>